In today's video, I'll be focusing on how to shape a boule, which is a round loaf, and how to bake in a traditional Dutch oven. I'll walk through the mixing and bulk fermentation stage briefly, but won't be diving into too much detail. If you're just getting started and looking for a comprehensive step-by-step -step video, I recommend watching my how to make artisan sourdough bread video first and using this as a supplemental guide. We're gonna jump in at the end of the auto lease. This step hydrates the flours and helps with gluten development and dough structure. You can see that the dough feels and looks very different from when we first mix the flours and water together, and it's already gained a decent amount of strength. You can grab the dough with both hands and spread it relatively thinly. This is similar to a window pane test before it shows signs of tearing. So we're gonna go ahead and add our ripe Just Peak sourdough starter to the mixture. Many sourdough bread recipes call for preparing an offshoot levain, which is used entirely in your dough. I prefer to use a portion of my ripe Just Peak starter. This choice is up to you, but you'll need to make sure that you have just enough left over to maintain your normal starter. We're gonna go ahead and mix our starter into our auto lease mixture for the first step of mixing. Once we've thoroughly mixed in our starter, we'll cover the bowl and allow it to rest for 30 minutes before adding our salt. So here's our dough after it's rested for 30 minutes. You can see that it's smoothed out a lot and it's almost shiny. So we're gonna go ahead and add our salt and fully incorporate that into the dough. You really wanna be thorough with this step because you don't wanna be feeling any salt granules at the end of mixing. After mixing, we'll cover the bowl and allow the dough to rest before performing our first stretch and fold. To complete a stretch and fold, dip your hands lightly in water. This helps you gently handle the dough and prevent it from sticking to your hands. Grab the top portion of the dough with both hands. Gently pull and stretch it upwards without tearing and fold over the opposite edge. Rotate the bowl 180 degrees and repeat. Rotate the bowl 90 degrees and repeat from both sides. After performing the stretch and folds, I like to gently lift the dough from the center, letting both ends fold under to round it in the bowl. So we're about to perform our second stretch and fold set. So my recipe recommends a certain number of stretch and folds, but it's always really important to adjust this based on how your own dough is behaving. Since this dough is developing nicely and is already feeling pretty strong, I'm only going to do four sets of stretch and folds and I'm going to space them apart by about 30 minutes. We're about to do our third set of stretch and folds. As you can see, the dough has gained some volume, but most of that will occur during the final stage of bulk fermentation. So we're about to do our fourth and final stretch and fold. After this stage, we'll allow the dough to rest for the remainder of bulk fermentation. Here we are at the end of bulk fermentation. Bulk fermentation starts when you add your starter to your dough and when you turn it out for shaping. The total bulk fermentation time will vary depending on your ambient temperature, your dough temperature and how stable that remained, your starter strength, the flours that you're using, and a lot of other variables. There should be visible signs of fermentation, some gas bubbles on the edges and throughout, and when you wiggle the bowl back and forth, the dough should look aerated and lively. We're gonna go ahead and gently turn this out onto a dry countertop to do our pre-shape. The pre-shape is a great opportunity to build a little extra strength into your dough. Since this is a high hydration dough, you'll need a bench scraper in order to do this. Use the bench knife to gently round the dough, pulling it gently towards you against the countertop to create that tension. As the dough and surface develops, it will become less sticky and just be lightly tacky. If the dough is overly sticky or falling apart, this is a sign that the dough is overproofed. After performing the pre-shape, we'll allow the dough to rest for 15 to 20 minutes to relax before the final shape. We're ready to do our final shape. For today's video, I'll be showing you how to shape a boule, which is another word for a round. At this point, you should have a well-dusted round banneton set aside. Lightly dust the surface of the dough with bread flour. Use your bench knife to gently lift and flip it flour side down onto your countertop. Dust your hands lightly with flour and gently set it into a rectangle. Using both hands, gently grab the top portions of the dough and fold it down past the center, pressing the seam slightly. 
repeat from the opposite edge. Gently rotate the dough and repeat from both edges. Then roll the dough gently over onto its seam. Using both hands, gently cup and round the dough, dragging it down slightly as you're rotating it. You want the countertop to be fairly dry during this step so that it helps with tension building. After shaping, the surface of the dough should be very smooth. Using your bench scraper, gently lift the dough and place it seam side up into your well-floured banneton. Since the dough still looks a little bit shaggy on the surface, I'm going to lightly flour my hands and grab the edges and bring them into the center to seal it. Allow the dough to rest for 10 minutes before transferring to the fridge for the final retard. It's the next morning and we're ready to remove our dough from the fridge and transfer it to our preheated Dutch oven for baking. Center and place a piece of parchment paper over your banneton and top with a cutting board. Holding them together, gently flip and invert it over onto your countertop. Using kitchen scissors, trim the parchment to create two handles on both edges for lifting the dough. Removing excess parchment will prevent it from crumpling in the Dutch oven and indenting the edges of your loaf during baking. Carefully remove your preheated baking vessel from the oven and set it nearby for transferring. For this dough, I'm just going to do a simple cross. Grab the parchment handles to lift the dough, gently setting it into the preheated Dutch oven. Carefully cover with the lid and transfer to your oven. Now that our bread has finished baking, we're going to transfer it to a cooling rack. It's very tempting to slice into warm bread, but you really want to allow it to cool completely before slicing. Slicing into warm bread results in a gummier texture and causes the bread to stale faster. And there we have it. If you enjoyed this latest video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching.